All right. Make A the subject of the formula. It means get A on its own. Now, what's stopping everything happening here is the, is the half. Okay, so there's two ways of doing it. The first way of doing it is to say 2A equals a half plus B. Then you could say divide both sides by 2. And you could say A equals a quarter plus B over 2. That's one answer. Another answer could be I give them the same denominator. And once I give them the same denominator, it's going to be 2B over 4. And this answer is 1 plus 2B over 4. What's another answer? 2B plus 1 over 4. I'll show you the way I probably would have done it. Okay? I probably would have multiplied both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction. And what I would have ended up with was 4a minus 2b equals 1. Would have brought the 2b out the other side and would have got 4a equals 1 plus 2b. Then would have brought me 4 down. a equals 1 plus 2b all over 4. All roads lead to the same place. You'll get the same answer once you do it properly. Okay. Next one. Get a on its own in this question, the second one. A appears how many times? That means you're going to do what? You got to factorize B minus 3 equals 5. B minus 3 is being multiplied by A on the left, which means it's going to be division when it makes its way to the right. That's that one there. How many people got that one? Pretty good. Next one 7A minus 21 equals 4B. Bring over your 21. And then divide it by 7. And that's your answer there. 4b plus 21 all over 7. Okie dokes. Any questions thus far? Oh. Here we go guys. 3x over 4. I'm going to multiply to 5. And what we're going to get is 5y plus 5z. Okay. Now that that's done. I'm going to cross multiply up to 4 because I don't want the 4 there. Okay, so I'm going to get 3x equals what? 20y plus 20z. I want the y on its own. I'm going to bring the 20z over to your side. So we're going to get is 3x minus 20z equals 20y. Now, what, how do we get the y on its own? Divide by? 20. 3x minus 20z all over 20. Does everybody understand? It doesn't matter which way I write it. So, example, 3 plus 2 equals 5. 5 equals 3 plus 2. Do you notice I didn't have to change any of the signs? Because I just turned it around. Okay, that's what I did there. Okay. Next one. That one was number 3. Now we're on number 6. So bye bye number three. Number six. P over Q equals Q over T plus one over one. Okay. Now how to go about doing this? There's two ways, and remember all roads lead to the same point. Okay? The problem is the fractions. Would everybody agree the fractions are the problem? Yeah? Now if we had the same fraction on the right hand side, would it be a problem then? We could cross multiply. So I'll show you what we're doing, okay? If I change 1, the number 1, I'm going to change it into t over t. Why did I do that? Because t is the, or is t is the other denominator. Now both denominators are the same. Have I changed the question? T over T is what value? 1. Haven't changed it, okay? Because any number divided by itself has to be 1. In the same way, any letter divided by itself has to be 1. So Z divided by Z is 1. Okay? So what we're going to do next is, remember this from Junior Sarah, right? Uh, was to give you this question, what would you tell me the answer is? You tell me it's 6 over 2, and the answer is? 3. 
I could rewrite it like this, couldn't I? Is that answer still 6 over 2? Yeah. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do P over Q equals uh, Q plus T all over T. What do I do next? Cross I can cross multiply. Why am I now allowed to cross multiply but yet at the start I couldn't? You have the same denominator on the one side. You can't have two different denominators on the one side. It has to be one denominator on the left and only one denominator on the right. They can't be different denominators. Cross multiply. We're going to get PT equals up here Q by Q Q by T Q T Where are we going to bring Q T now? How many T's do we have? How many T's do we have? Two. If you have two T's, you gotta bring them both to the same side. And then what you do with the side on the left? Take out. T. And then what happens to the P minus Q? In division mode, it's multiplying on the left makes the division on the right. How many people got that one out? Let's try this another way. In the last question, I decided to multiply by t over t. So let's try it another way. This time, I'm going to move the 1 over the other side. And I'm going to get is p over q minus 1 equals q over t. I can't cross multiply, can I? Because there's two different denominators on the left hand side. How would I give them the same denominator? Multiply the top and bottom by Q. You're going to end up with Q over Q. Now I'm going to end up with P minus Q all over Q equals Q over T. Now what can I do next? Cross multiply. I'm going to end up with T times P minus Q equals Q squared. Does everybody understand where I got Q squared from? Q times Q. Does everybody understand where I got T multiplied by P minus Q? Now, do I need to multiply that out or will I just send the P minus Q back down? I can just send the P minus Q down, can't I? And I end up with Q squared over P minus Q. Is it the same answer? It is. But this time it's a bit shorter, isn't it? So, there's several ways of doing it. Okay, let's try another one. Number seven, for instance. Okay, number seven. Now, y equals 3x plus 4 divided by x minus 1. We need to get x on its own. Can I cross multiply? Yeah. Why? Because there are two like there are just one on each side and one. One denominator each side. So I'm gonna get y multiply. What's y multiply by x? Minus. What's y multiply by minus one? One minus y. And the other one's still three x plus four. What's my next step? So what is cross multiplying? Uh, cross multiplying is basically this, Brian. It has to go across the equal sign, okay? So if I was to tell you, uh, I'm trying to think of a number, the number 4. 8 over 2 is the number 4, isn't it? Yeah. And what else is the number 4 is 24 divided by 6. You're agreed that this is equal to each other, aren't you? Yeah. Now what cross multiplication does, Brian, is the 2 gets multiplied by the 24, and the 8 gets multiplied by the 6. And what you know happens, 48 equals 48. It's just a way of moving them around while keeping them balanced. And I can cross multiply the other one because 3x plus 4, not just 3x. Okay. Right, let's go back to where I started this from. 8 over 2 equals, I said 24 over 6, right? You happy with it? I said 24 over 6, yeah? Yeah. Now imagine I broke the 24 into 18 plus 6. Alright? Yeah. That's similar to what you were saying. It has yeah. the plus 4 though. Like 5 minus 1. 
Okay, just give me a second. 6 gets multiplied by the A, becomes 48. 2 multiplied by 18 plus 6. What's 2 times 18? 36. 2 times 6? Are they still balanced? It doesn't matter what it is. If you move it that way, it always works. Okay. Alright, now we're back here. And what we're going to do is we're going to move the x's over one side and the y's over the other side. So we're going to get is yx minus 3x equals 4 plus y. Now what's our next move? Next move, guys. We're looking to get x on its own. How many x's do you see? Factorize. Now you get y minus 3 equals 4 plus y. Now Oscar, how did you finish that off? Y minus 3 goes on need the 4 plus Y. How many people got that? Which one is that? That is part 7. This one here. Okay, one person. Now, number 8. Number 8, okay. P equals QR. Q minus R. Get R on its own. Can we cross multiply? Yeah. So I'm going to get PQ minus PR equals QR. How many R's do you see? Two. Two. Let's bring PR over this side. And what do we get? PQ equals QR plus PR. Factorize the right hand side. What happens? Do you want me to spin that around so it looks more like what we're used to? I'll do a spin. QR plus PR equals PQ. Now what can I do with this side? Take out. Take out the R and end up with Q plus P equals PQ. Bring the Q plus P down. And you're going to get R equals PQ divided by Q plus P.